Welcome back to another Daily Walk. Well, today we're going to answer part two of the question I was answering last week, where I was asked about the King James Only movement and chick tracks. And he did mention specifically the chick tracks, possibly because they are interwoven with the King James Only movement. Some of the biggest people in the King James Only movement are also high level people in chick tracks. We'll kind of get to that to the end, but I want to talk about Bible tracks first and then uh, as a generality and then get into the chick tracks. Now, first and foremost, are Bible tracks an effective way of preaching the gospel? Different people have different opinions. I know people who were saved because they were handed a track and they read it and they're saved. And now that person, uh, those persons, I should say, generally are much more favorable to Bible tracks than I was as I was handed several Bible tracks. And they were things to look at, if not just throw away instantly. In fact, as I'm working on my uh, testimony story, I tell the story about when four of us boys were running, you know, riding our bikes around our, our complex and we were stopped by a bunch of guys handing out Bible tracts who gave us the easy believes them. It doesn't matter what you do, you say these simple words and read this Bible tract and you're going to be in heaven, period. And, uh, you know, they handed us those. We threw the tracks into the nearby yard and laughed at the, the silliness and stupidness of the people along the way. So we can't just say Bible tracts are universally good. It's really God that transforms our heart. It's really God that prepares us for hearing the gospel. Can a track help with that? I'm going to say yes, it's possible. I mean, I came to Christ in the middle of a word faith cult, but I wouldn't say go to a word faith cult. It's rank heresy, okay? Um, but at the same time, I think tracks do have their purpose. They have more information. They have a reiteration of a conversation. Is handing out a track effectively preaching the gospel. The downside, I think, is that a lot of people think that we're, it's hard sharing your faith. It's, it's nerve-wracking. You're, you know, you, you're afraid of rejection, and so we don't want to go up and just start talking to somebody about the gospel, and so we think just going up and handing them a track is going to solve that problem. Well, that actually tends to make it worse, because now they're like, oh, look at what this religious freak gave me, and they laugh about it with their buddies, and most of the time they're not going to read them. All right, now, the thing is, is that even in our modern day, just going up and preaching the gospel to a random stranger on the streets is generally not all that effective either. Really sharing the gospel is a much more personal thing. It's a much more relational thing. You have a long friendship. Maybe you, you're a familiar stranger with a guy at the bus stop. You guys can strike up some conversations and over the course of time preach the gospel in that manner. That's the type of place. But just standing at a Bible at a bus stop with somebody and going, oh, there's a guy here. Here, have a Bible track. You know, it's not going to result in really the, the gospel that, that we're looking at because we have to have a relationship first. Now, the next factor is the people who like to just go around and hand out Bible tracts everywhere. There's a couple serious issues. Number one, we have this thing called littering, which is generally a finable crime, not generally an arrestable crime. But if you're walking around just, and there's tracks that are just specifically designed to drop on the ground, that's called litter, people. And they look like folded dollar bills, and so it's like, ooh, it's a dollar bill. You go down, pick it up, and you open it up, it says, disappointed? You wouldn't be if you know Jesus. Like, psh rip that thing up. That's called litter. Okay, that's called litter. And there's people who walk around, and I remember um, a good friend of mine was one of these guys. We're walking down the street one day down in Austin, and he's like throwing Bible tracts all over the place. It's like, dude, you're littering. Stop it. Stop it. You're contributing to the streets being bad. Now, the second group is the people who, instead of giving a tip at the restaurant, they like to give a Bible track at the restaurant. Like, I'm not, I'm giving them something way better than a filthy mammon. I'm giving them the chance for God. You know, how do you even know the person's not even saved? And then, of course, they're already overworked. They're having a hard time already. They get to cleaning up your table and they're like, oh, they left me a Bible track instead of a tip. You know, and, and not to say that, that many of the people do this leave just the Bible track. You know, some of them do both. But it's important to consider how tracks are handed out. So for me, ultimately, I'm not a fan of Bible tracks. I don't have them. I don't hand them out. I'd rather develop a relationship, 
share the gospel in small pieces, provide contact information, and actually engage in a relationship with somebody who wants to hear about the gospel. I think that that's way more effective than handing somebody a track that says turn or burn, baby. Now, let's go from here because that's a good transition into the chick tracks. The chick tracks, now these are the most popular, so if you're handed a track, it's more often than not a chick track. And uh, the chick tracks, they have, tend to have a bad reputation. Now, I read their Wikipedia page, which most of their Wikipedia page is like, you know, it's the standard criticisms of any Christian organization. So it's like, eh, I don't really buy any of those criticisms. They say they're anti-Catholic, they're anti-homosexual, all this kind of stuff. It's, they say the Bible says homosexuality is a sin. The Bible does say homosexuality is a sin. That's not a criticism, okay? For sure. Um, but I think that the way that they, that they do their approach, I think is too forceful. In fact, too forceful for most people where the chick tracks are completely devoid of anything resembling love. It's simply you turn or you're just going to burn in hell. And that's all there is to it. Um, I did actually go through and look at that homosexual one because there's a lot of controversy around it. So I looked at the one called Gay Blade, which I thought was not super bad, but it also def definitely was not loving. There's a way to preach the gospel with a homosexual that maintains the degree of love. Chick Track doesn't do that. The whole thing it was all the homosexuals, the homosexuals, the homosexuals. And I think that that's depersonalizing. And so they do that type of thing, not just with that viewpoint, but with about everything else as well. And as I mentioned, they are so deep rooted into the King James only group. In fact, one of the chief guys over there is David Daniels, who's like a King James only evangelist who is so misguided about the fact that he literally is a person that says every translation that's not King James is absolute heresy. And then here's the problem we get. The problem we have is just picture the scenario. You're handing out chick tracks and typically the chick tracks are handed out. There's exceptions obviously, but a lot of a lot of your independent fundamental King James only groups hand out chick tracks because that's just where it is. There are outlier churches. But then what happens is you're reading, and I'm just going to talk just about that church. So this might be more of a criticism of the, of the style of church rather than the track itself. I'm just, the point I'm trying to make is that it's so interwound. And so you're handed a track, suppose that it does reach you, and you're like, I want to go back to church. So you head on up to your church with your NIV Bible, because like it or not, the NIV is the most popular translation. You're sitting in the church, and they're reading all this kind of, this and unto thy thou been, and you're like, I don't understand, because you're a new believer, you've never seen a Bible, and more and more progressively, more people in America, at least, grow up without any Bible influence whatsoever. And so they're not used to the language. It just seems old and dated to them. And then they go in and the, and the guy up on, on stage, he's using the King James Bible. And then they get talking to the guy and like, well, that's a bad translation. Now they'll give you the King James, but then you take it home and you can't read it. You're looking at it going, I don't understand any of this. Well, this all started with, hey, here is a Bible track come to Jesus, you're like, okay, sure, I'm going to come to Jesus. You go off to the church, and then they tell you that every Bible except their Bible is sinful. And that is actually to the degree that David, uh, David Daniels does do, that he does actually sit there and say, your, your mission is not working because you're not using the King James. That's from a speech he just did not even a year ago. This is the type of group we have. And so the Chick Tracks, they are too forceful, they are too widespread, and oftentimes they are completely devoid of the love of Christ. Now I am against going too far the other way and saying everything's all got to be about the love of Christ. That's not true either. But that being said, um, what is important to see is that I think that tracks can have their place if you develop a relationship with somebody you hand out a track for maybe more information maybe because it has your church address on the back if you're not one of these independent fundamental Baptist churches who thinks the NASB Bible is going to be sinful you know then uh, then that can be a, a good thing it can be good after you've developed a relationship and and share the gospel a little bit or maybe introduce the gospel that hey you know we got to run but I got a little track here I mean I realize these are sometimes hokey would you mind reading it hey that there's a valid place for that 
But the idea that we're going to run around and throw tracks all over the place, hand them to random strangers and leave them on our table instead of leaving a cash tip for the waitress, this is what gives tracks their bad name. And so we got to have this, this striking balance. Use it as a tool, not as the means to the end. And that's what the important point is about tracks in general and chick tracks. I think chick tracks, they just have a lot of baggage. And so if I were going to use tracks for anything, I probably would do something other than the chick tracks because of the baggage that comes with them. So that's kind of my thoughts on those. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.